Once again, it's time for a monthly Popcrust Community Redraw episode. And it's also time for another Multiverse Tales episode. You all know the drill by now, right? Over the last month, hundreds of my subscribers have been submitting their own original characters to possibly be redrawn in today's episode. They were all coming in based off a theme, which they are every month, and this month's theme was Goop. So I'm gonna take a bunch of those Goopy characters, redraw them in my art style, and put them into a Multiverse Tales story that also includes some other fan-favorite characters from Multiverse Tales. I wonder who could possibly be in this episode, huh? I guess we gotta find out! Let's get into it, shall we? Let's go! Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. Rouge awoke to the sound of a booming voice. Overseers of the multiverse, are you ready for the games to begin? She shot upright, her goopy red mass reforming into a humanoid shape as a wave of cheers rolled above her. Rouge was inside a tiny stone room with a glass ceiling above and grass beneath her. She still had with her the book she'd carried before blacking out, and the clothes she'd been wearing, but nothing else. Where was she? In the sky above, a figure in cascading robes with a mountain of multicolored hair was on some kind of holographic projection, speaking to a crowd of distant figures floating on metal platforms. A few of you lovely little gods have brought your slimiest and goopiest champions and monsters from your home dimension for today's game, and we greatly appreciate your... donations. The challenge today is simple, but I hope you're all listening down there. Rouge was confused and alarmed, but still listened intently to the figure. You can be immediately sent back to your home dimensions, where you can continue living your precious little lives in peace, as soon as you slay one of the many monsters placed in the arena with you today. A chill ran through her crimson mass. Slay? I have to kill something? She thought. Of course, if you so desire, you could instead kill a fellow contestant. It's really up to you. All we ask is that you give us watching a glory- In the distance, a figure yelled, Hurricane Hammer! And an eruption of shattering rocks made the figure above stop. Oh, looks like we have a very eager contestant. One of our late additions, not so much fitting with the goopy theme, but a friend of an overseer who rudely tried to stop us from enacting today's games. The voice on the ground got louder, as if the figure that had crashed out of their containment was approaching Rouge. Taren, Benny, want you in there? Either way, I'm knocking. A fist suddenly slammed through Rouge's wall, then tore through the stones, revealing a tall, blue-clad, fleshy figure with glowing eyes. Oh, sorry, wrong box, but you're free to go now if you want. The figure above continued. Well, I suppose we should let this kick off then, shall we? I, your elegant and ever-charming game master, Eloise Ludum, say, let the goopy games begin. The broken stone and room around Rouge vanished into thin air. She was in a massive arena that went on for miles. It had green hills and some small forests, and was bright, as if it were daylight, despite the sky above being dark and starry. Well, I guess my breakout didn't help much. I'm Heath, by the way. Since we're here anyway, want a monster hunt together? Seems like it might be the only way out. Rouge didn't understand his lack of alarm at this situation, and was still reeling at the thought of the task at hand when the sound of thudding feet and sparks began to crescendo. She and Heath both turned to see another contestant stomping towards them. He seemed to be made of dark clay with electricity erupting off him. Look at that, he said. Maybe we can make a whole gang of monster hunting. But before he could finish, a cannon of lightning shot at him from the approaching figure. I don't know what this is or who you are, but there's a crowd looking for a show, so I'll gladly deliver. Heath was struck but barely stumbled back from the lightning, and his body almost seemed to absorb it. Well, you may not be a monster, but I guess you'll do for a warm-up. He cracked his knuckles with a sound like lightning. Rouge stepped back as the insanity ensued, unaware that even more madness was occurring all across the arena. On the opposite side of the arena, Taryn, the reason Heath was in the arena in the first place, was sprinting away from a stampeding mass of goop and granite. While he ran, Taryn was trying to tear off a metal gauntlet that was covering his normally glowing forearm. It was no use, and the gelatinous bison was fast approaching. He could practically feel the beast breathing down his neck, when a familiar voice approached from the sky above. 
You know, I had snot running down my nose before, but I've never had snot running after me before. I guess you can't say the same anymore, huh, kid? Benny Sharp, clad in a sleek mech armor, fired down towards Taran and snatched him off the ground. They soared into the air, far from the creature below. Taran was glad to be saved, but as they soared into the sky, a familiar foul stench shot into his nose. For a panicked moment, he looked around, but the source was nowhere nearby. He let the thought slide and turned to Benny. Thank you for the save, Mr. Sharp, Taran said. I fear I've really gotten us into a mess here. But he stopped as he noticed a child-sized mass of goop on Benny's back that looked almost like a big slimy teddy bear with a grin. Um, Mr. Sharp, you have something on your back. Oh yeah, I picked this guy up just before you. He's cute, huh? What's your name again, kid? Hi, I'm Snoop. The mother goo made me to stop the evil Professor Genome from ruining my world. I... All right, good? Taran said, confused. Nice to meet you, I suppose. They all landed down on a hill. Taran stepped away and looked up to the distant crowd above. He couldn't believe how many overseers there were just watching for the sadistic fun of it. Well, kid, Benny said, setting down Goop, you really did tick off the wrong drag queen today. I made that mistake once, almost got beat up by a whole bunch of dancers. But I apologized, bought them all drinks, and they forgave me. And you know what? After that, I had the wildest night of my life. They's a bunch of fun folks. I mean, I guess I'm stereotyping, because I wouldn't call this Eloise guy any fun. Taran didn't know what a drag queen was, but from context, he assumed Benny was referring to their captor, Eloise Ludum. Do you flesh bodies know what's going on? Snoop was just in the middle of saving Snoop's friends when Snoop showed up here. Is this just Snoop having a weird dream? Taran looked down, somewhat intrigued by the strange, adorable figure. I'm afraid not, Snoop. Eloise Ludum puts on deathmatch events with different types of beings and creatures from across the multiverse. They're sadistic shows for overseers, or people who are supposed to protect different universes, to watch for fun. As Taran spoke, he glanced down at the band on his arm. I was with Mr. Sharp here and our other friend Heath when a herald of Eloise's came looking to borrow some monsters from my world to use in today's goopy games. I incapacitated the herald, then asked Heath and Mr. Sharp to come with me to capture Eloise Ludum next. But she knocked us all out and put us in here with the rest of you. And none of us hold it against you. We all probably would have done the same thing. But why ain't you gotten us out of here yet, kid? Benny asked. You forget you're an overseer too? Can't you just teleport us out of here or something? Use one of those big glowy ring things that you do? Evidently, not with this on, Taran said, raising his arm with the gauntlet. I control my abilities with the runes on my forearm. I think there's another way, but I haven't learned how yet. I'm powerless with this on. Oh, well that sucks. The crazy queen figured out your one weakness, huh? A bracelet. Seems like a pretty terrible kryptonite if you ask me. But anyway, we'll deal with what we got. Anyway, that explanation clears stuff up for you, Snoop. Snoop looked up with a big grin and simply said, No! Benny looked back at Taran. I love this adorable little guy. Can we keep him? Back on Rouge's side of the arena, she still watched as her new friend brawled with a mucky foe. The electric brute's clay fist transformed into a massive spiky mallet that he swung towards Heath. Barely flinching, Heath caught the massive fist, but then the goop overtook his hand. The clay mass swung Heath over his head and slammed him into the ground. All right, brute, you wanna swing? Let's swing. Heath leapt up and with his hands still covered, he began to spin and spin at a rapid speed. The clay brute lifted off the ground, being spiraled around like a mucky tornado. His grip on Heath slowly slipped until finally he shot off into the sky, flying across the arena. Well, I doubt that will be the end of whoever that was, but at least he's out of our hair. Gives us space to go find some creatures. He turned back to his new crimson friend. What was your name again? I I'm Rouge. A are you really planning to kill a creature just to get out of here? Well, sure. I am Heath Hurricane Reynolds, and my life is dedicated to slaying monsters that scourge my or any other world out there. Why do you ask? Before she could answer, a loud buzzing began to approach in the air above. They both looked up to see a monstrous blend of bear, bumblebee, and dragon descending towards them at a rapid speed. Ah, oh, perfect timing! You want this one? I'm cool to wait for another. She looked from Heath to the approaching beast. I... I no, I, I'm not gonna kill something. The buzzing grew, as did Heath's confusion. Oh, uh, I mean, it's, it's just a monster. I, I don't care, I'm not killing an innocent creature. 
The beast was nearly on them. It swung its massive tail, and a glob of golden goo fired towards Rouge. She slid out of the way, dodging the blast, but the creature still barreled towards her. She didn't know what to do. Heath suddenly blasted towards her in a torrent of wind. He grabbed her off the ground and sprinted at a rapid speed away from the creature. Well, not killing anything is going to make it hard for you to get out of here, but I can at least help you stay alive for now. Maybe my friend Taryn will have an idea for you. Sweet, smelling globs of goo fired down all around them as Heath dodged and ran. Rouge watched the creature, still hot on their trails. It looked ferocious and angry, with slime dripping from its maw. But even still, she couldn't imagine herself killing it or any other creature that may be in this arena. But how else was she going to get out of there? Back across the arena, Taryn scanned the horizon, seeing a few different creatures and battles occurring. So as soon as we kill a creature, we're sent home, he said, recounting the information again to Benny and Snoop. I'd say we should meet up with Heath first, but I can't picture him struggling to slay anything with his powers, so long as they're not blocked in some way as well. He looked back at Benny. What about you, Mr. Sharp? Is the armor you're wearing capable of fighting well? I mean, it's all right, I guess. I was in the middle of giving it a tune-up, and some of the weapons are offline. I was trying to add these things called swizzle rockets. They basically fly and spin all over the place to confuse the enemies before they shoot towards the targets. But I ain't got them right yet. They kind of just zip all over the place and don't really hit nothing they supposed to. He started fiddling with the rocket holster on his forearm. I don't know if I could give it a tune-up in here. I mean, I ain't got none of my tools and nothing like that, but I guess I could give Fizz! The rocket suddenly shot out of its holster and started spiraling through the air, soaring off and away. They watched it fly right towards a massive, honey-spewing horror, chasing a familiar speedy figure in the distance. It struck the monster and exploded, blasting the creature to pieces. Benny had inadvertently gotten a kill. Well, would you look at that, I hit something. You know what they say though, kids. Some people are born great, some people achieve greatness, and some people are really great at making rackets. I just happen to be all three of those. Benny suddenly vanished from the arena in a blink. Tayrin was now one ally short, but at least had found his other. Heath sprinted in the direction of the rocket that had just blasted his pursuer, seeing that at the end of the trail was a figure on a hill that was hard to see in the distance but had similarly colored attire to Tayrin. So is there no kind of creature you'd kill, Rouge? He said, glancing back at the figure he carried. I mean, what if there was some kind of jellyfish creature? They don't have brains, right? They're just, like, plants, sort of. I don't know, I've never contemplated taking a life before. It just feels wrong, especially since they're just trapped in here like us. That gave Heath some mental pause about his willingness to slay whatever kind of creature he was faced with. But it didn't last long, as he was suddenly struck from the side by a stampeding horned slime ball. Rouge flew from his arms but landed softly on the ground, as a goopy bison stomped over Heath and continued on running. Heath leapt up quick, but the creature ran around and was charging back at him again. Rouge shot out a tendril-like arm and snagged the creature's legs. She tugged its feet from under it and it rolled across the ground before reaching Heath. He grabbed its horns and swung up trying to hurl it into the air away, but he only managed to tear the horns out of its head. The creature thrust its head up and smashed Heath into the air. Heath crashed to the ground again, but the bison was on him fast, stomping him into the ground consistently with its hooves, as Heath tried to protect himself and get some bearings. Drips of goop were getting in his eyes and mouth and sticking his arms together so he couldn't see and struggled to move. By this time, Taryn and Snoop had run down to where the fight was occurring. Taryn stopped to analyze the scene and come up with a plan, but Snoop just charged on in. Taryn thought to stop the little creature, but didn't have a chance. Stop hurting Snoop's new friend's friends, you mean creature! Snoop charged towards the bison, and Rouge felt some semblance of similarity with this strange small creature. Surely this adorable little thing wouldn't be willing to kill anything either, right? Snoop's arm suddenly fired into the bison, and its goop began getting sucked out of the beast, into Snoop. The bison thrashed and tried to run, but Snoop lifted what remained into the air. The creature flailed and shrieked as bits of rock and debris fell off it. There was a terrible schlorp sound as Snoop tore the creature in half and absorbed all of its green mass, causing Snoop to grow to ten times his previous size. Heath, Taryn, and Rouge simply watched in horror as Snoop stomped his foot and shrieked, Nobody hurts Snoop's new friends, or hurts Snoop's new friends of friends, or hurts Snoop's... But before he could continue, 
he vanished in a blink from succeeding at a kill. All that remained of the bison beast was a mess of scattered rocks and limbs. Another ally had gone home. Tehran regrouped with Heath and they made introductions. Rouge was conflicted as she explained her dilemma. I have no interest in roping you two into my problem, but I just don't see how I could bring myself to kill a living thing. It just seems so soulless. But that very statement sparked an idea in Tehran. Soulless, he mumbled with a shiver running down his spine, thinking back to the familiar scent he'd smelled earlier. What if I could guarantee you the creature that you were going to slay didn't have a soul? Rouge looked at him as though he were crazy. How would you possibly know that? Taren held up his arm with a gauntlet. Normally, when I have access to my abilities, I can see if a creature has a soul just by looking at them. Not with this on, but I do know Eloise's Herald brought a creature from my world here, and I know for absolute certainty that it doesn't have a soul. Heath interjected. Are you sure they brought it here? I thought they took us instead. Taren breathed in through his nose. I've smelled it. I smell it off in the distance now, somewhere. You don't forget that scent. It's here. It won't be easily defeated, but it is here. He turned to Rouge. We can help you find it and weaken it. Then you finish it off and get out of here. What do you think? Rouge looked at them both. She still didn't love the idea, but these two were so completely willing and set on helping her that she felt it was only right to agree. She nodded and the group set off, following nothing but a scent that slowly got stronger and stronger. They got into the thick of a forest when something suddenly darted through the trees above them. They all stopped and instinctively circled up. I don't know what that was, but it was too small to be what we're after, Taryn said, just as another being jolted onto the scene. I'm sorry everyone, but this creature is spoken for. A robotic voice chimed in, chasing whatever was in the trees. It shot a slimy green hand into the branches, and a nearly pitch black creature above shot just out of reach into another tree. The hand snagged a branch that turned black and sizzled from the grip of this robotic being. I'd very much like to get home as promptly as possible. I'd very much appreciate you allowing me to kill you. As expected, the creature continued to dodge strikes. Heath looked from the scene to Taryn and Rouge. I'm all right with us just moving on if that's all right with you two. But Taryn was adamantly listening to the sounds the creature above was making as it dodged around from the goopy hands trying to grab it. It didn't fight back and was making a wide array of different clicks and hums. Stop, wait, Taryn said to the goopy bot. I don't think that's a monster, I think it's a contestant. The bot stopped and turned to Taryn. As soon as he did, the creature landed on a branch and continued making sounds at the group. Its body was like a dark void, so black that it was nearly a living silhouette, save for a slight purple hue and white eyes. It just stared at him. Taryn stepped forward and slowly raised a hand. The being tilted its head, then followed suit. It wasn't a guarantee of sentience, but it was as close as Taryn could get without his powers. Taryn turned to the bot. The sounds it makes are too complex for non-sentient creatures. That must be their language. It's trying to say something. It's probably asking you to stop trying to kill it. The bot crossed his arms and rolled his eye. Yes, I understand. I had admittedly theorized there was a 72.45 chance of that being the case, but I was willing to take the chance. Though I suppose I could stop and seek a new opponent. There was suddenly a rumbling roar like a foul belch that echoed through the woods. Taryn shuddered. Well, I suggest hunting a target far from where we are, as the one we're after is not one you want to trifle with, if you have the option. Unfortunately, we don't. A mass of black sludge fired through the trees as the whole group sprinted away. The void creature that Taryn had protected sprinted on right behind him. They ran into an open field, but just as they escaped the woods, a gray, goopy beast burst out of the trees, soared over them, and crashed to the ground before them. It roared once more and filled the air with a putrid cloud of stench. They'd found their target. Or rather, the smogging Heteran had found them. Rouge's entire body suddenly felt like it wanted to melt away and die from the horrid stench. Taryn yelled through a piece of cloth he'd torn off his pants to hold in front of his face. Everyone with a nose, plug it. The fumes can knock you out very quickly. 
That wasn't an option for Rouge, as her entire body had the capacity for smell and taste. It was the first time she truly envied fleshy humanoids. The smogging Heteran whipped its head around, and massive globs of its own body soared straight at Tehran. The fumes fogging his mind made him hesitate for which way to dodge, but he was struck from behind and taken to the ground, just under the globs, by the Void creature. They both picked themselves up and sprinted to the side. Thank you. The being made some clicking noise in response. The Heteran swung its tail around in a circle. Rouge ducked under it. Heath dove over into a roll, but it hit the goopy bot and he swung around on the tail. Is one of you claiming this creature? If not, I'll happily kill it myself. His arm suddenly shifted into a brighter green, and he quickly melted through the creature's tail, completely severing it, and it dropped back to the ground. The Heteran didn't even shriek or flinch, it simply stepped back towards the tail and instantly reattached it. Heath yelled, Sorry bot, this one is for Rouge here. If we can kill it, that is. Taren, what's the plan? Taren pointed to its head. It has a brain and eyes, but the rest of its body is mostly just sludge. Heath cracked his neck and a swirl of wind kicked up around him. Headshot. Got it. He fired through the air, fist cocked. Hurricane! Ha! A putrid, goopy arm suddenly swung up and smashed him out of the air. He became encased in a clump of goop as he crashed to the earth. He tried to tear away the entrapment, but it wasn't moving fast. Taren ran towards Heath to help, but he was already stumbling from the stench. Then another blast of goop smacked him off his feet and glued Taren to the ground. The creature lumbered towards him. The bot swung an arm up and melted through the creature's leg to cut off its front paw. Rouge leapt forward, hardly able to remain in a humanoid form from the foul stench, but she pushed through it to grab the severed piece and hurl it away so the beast couldn't reattach it. But it continued to lumber forth still, and its head was right above Taren. Heath tore away at his goop, but not fast enough. Taren couldn't move in the slightest. He wriggled and thrashed, but it was no use, as the massive maw of the beast descended on him. But just then, Void fired into the creature's mouth and held it open. Void's body had shifted from a peaceful purple tinge to red, and he looked livid. His body melted into an inky puddle and slithered into the monster's head. It closed its mouth and made a foul face. Everyone just stared for a moment. But then, the creature's red eyes suddenly got sucked into its head. Its body started to sizzle. Then, in a burst of black goop, Void fired out of its head and landed beside Taren. The Heteran's body shrunk, bubbled, and melted in on itself, slowly deteriorating away in a foul cloud of smog. Void looked from Taren to Rouge, then back to Taren. He made a sound that Taren still didn't understand, but regardless of what it was, Taren again said, Don't worry. Thank you for saving me again. Void vanished in a blink due to his kill and the group was safe. But they were also back to square one. The bot, who finally shared its name as Marone, melted the goop off of Heath and Taren. Well, that was fun and all, but I still have to go find a creature to kill so I can get home. I will see you all later, or more than likely not. Taren looked at Rouge. I I'm sorry, I, I don't know what we do from here. She sighed. To be honest, I don't know if I could have killed that thing anyway. Soul or not, it still would have felt wrong to me. You may all just have to leave me behind. That wasn't an option for Taren or Heath. Taren's eyes darted to the distance, where the creature's paw that Rouge had tossed aside was still sizzling away, and the severed limb shot an idea into Taren. Morone, wait! Your hands! What all can you melt through with them? The bot spun back around. Lots of things. I can change the acidity of my body to be the most acidic substance on Earth. Or, at least on my Earth, I'm not sure about this world we're on. Taren held out his arm blocked by the gauntlet. Try this. If you can get this off me, I can get all of us out of here. That's a bold claim, human. I hope you're right. The hologram face of Eloise burst into the air above them again. Oh, how wonderful! Our meddling overseer is going to risk melting off his own arm to free himself and his new friends. Place your bets, everyone. Will this end in victory or amputee? Taren ignored the voice and put a piece of cloth between his teeth. The bot grabbed his bond and it began to sizzle. Taren's eyes shot open wide in horror as drips of metal and acid grazed his arm beneath and melted into his skin. He wanted to scream, but gave the audience above no such satisfaction. 
Slowly, the gauntlet deteriorated away enough that he could yank his arm out. He slammed his arm into the grass and tore up dirt to rub on it. His breath rumbled out as tears dripped down his face, still withholding any yells. After a moment, he was recovered enough to stand. He thrust his arm up and tapped the glowing runes that had been previously blocked by the gauntlet. The group huddled up and took one last look up at Eloise and the crowd. We're going to shut you down, Eloise Ludum. You may be strong, but we've got some powerful friends ourselves. Oh, well that sounds exciting. I'll be sure to gather a crowd for that event. But bye-bye for now. Taryn, Heath, Rouge, and Moroni all vanished in a ring of light. The day was won, but that was nowhere near the last trouble Eloise would cause the heroes of the multiverse. As always, massive, massive thank you to all of you who submitted. There was so much cool stuff to go through. I loved all of your different interpretations of how to use goop as a theme. And of course, specific thank you to the people that got chosen for this episode. KLZ677, Sybil Scribble Oz, Salido underscore Art, Fledged Feathers Studios, Challenger dash Lyra dot Surudoshita, and Beyond Impossible. You all gave me such cool characters to work with, I hope you like the way that I adapted them into the story for this episode, and they are now officially part of Multiverse Tales canon. If you're alright with that, that is. But anyway, I also got to announce the theme for next month's Popcross Community Redraw. And because lots of people seem to be really enjoying my new dinosaur geneticist character, Champagne McGregor, from the recent famous video game Characters as Dinosaurs episode, first of all, I'm gonna do another episode with him and dinosaurs coming up this Friday, but I thought I'd do a Community Redraw episode where I take some of your characters and turn them into dinosaurs as that character. So the specific theme for this month is I want all of you to submit your own original alien characters. Not necessarily alien as in, you know, the movie alien, just any kind of alien creature, being, species, whatever you want. But I'm gonna take your own original characters and I'm gonna turn them into dinosaurs. You submit them as aliens, I turn them into dinosaurs. Want to make sure to get that right because some people were confused with the time I turned superheroes into dragons. So yeah, submit your own alien characters. I'll put a deadline on screen. You can submit to popcrossanimations at gmail.com or to characters for pop in the Discord, both linked in the description. And I'm excited to see what you've all got. But besides that, that's all for today. I'm Christian Pearson. This has been Popcross Studios, home of the nerdiest art videos on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and submitting, everybody. And I will see you all in the next dinosaur episode on Friday. Goodbye.